I feel like it's been a while since we talked about any drama with the beauty influencers and a lot of stuff has been piling up and we have to talk about it. It's a mess, so let's get into it. The first thing we have to talk about is Coachella and all the drama that's come from it. We already talked about a lot of the drama that happened over Coachella weekend, but now we have to talk about some of the fallout that happened afterwards. Manny MUA was invited to Coachella by Urban Decay and he took Laura Lee as his plus one. They were filming Get Ready With Me's all weekend long and since Manny was invited by Urban Decay, of course, he was going to be using mostly their products. Today's makeup vibe is going to be a full coverage fantasy. It's giving ghosts. Spooky. I'm so excited because we're actually here with Urban Decay. So shout out to my Urban Decay girlies. We love you. And honestly, what better brand to last all day? Before you set your face with powder, you use setting spray. I'm taking all nighter, get a little spritz, a light layer. Doesn't have to be a lot, a light layer as I do six pumps. Now set with your favorite powder and baby, it's not gonna move. Manny ended up using the Urban Decay Quickie Concealer and then he immediately set his face. Now there was nothing at all wrong with this video. He disclosed that he was invited by the brand verbally and in the caption and everything was good. That's until it wasn't. Later on that night, a video started going around of Manny at Coachella telling a rep for Hourglass that he was wearing the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. Oh my gosh, I love your makeup. It's oh, so thank stunning. Thank you, thank you. What are you wearing? I'm wearing the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. <gasps> oh my god, it looks so good. Thank you. Your under eyes look flawless. <laughs> Don't they? So good. Stunning. <laughs> love you. it. You're giving luxury. I'm trying, I'm trying. You really are. Slay! <laughs> And right away, people were like, um, did you not say you were there with Urban Decay and we're wearing Urban Decay's concealer? I'm so excited because we're actually here with Urban Decay. So shout out to my Urban Decay girlies. We love you. And honestly, what better brand to last all day? Now, at this point, things weren't looking good and Manny and the girl from Hourglass started to receive a ton of backlash. People were even comparing it to the whole Lashgate situation with Michaela. Okay, I'm going to add a second. Look at the length. Do you see that? I am speechless. It seemed like some people felt like either Manny was lying to the Hourglass girl or he was lying in his Urban Decay video. One person commented on Manny's video and said, but why did you say in that other girl's video it was the Hourglass Vanish Concealer? And Manny responded and said, haha, that was a bit. She literally works for Hourglass. Well, I guess the backlash started to get a little bit intense because Manny actually got on a live and addressed what happened at Coachella and why he said he was wearing Hourglass. Manny explained that he was actually wearing three different concealers that day, but obviously in his get ready with me, he wasn't going to show them all because Urban Decay was taking him to Coachella and he wanted to respect them. This is what I have. Okay, so I, I'm literally using my... I'm using my bag of goodies right here that's right next to me i'm gonna show you guys the concealers i used on friday okay this is just gonna be a side note so i'm pulling them out of my bag hold on i'm almost done right here these are the three concealers i used on friday however i was making content for urban decay so the only one i used and showed when i was filming my content was urban decay because i'm obviously gonna like respect the brand deal duh hourglass nars vanished pot Nope, soft matte, soft matte. And this to brighten my good old quickie, naked quickie to brighten my under eye very bright. And it was lovely. So I was doing my brand, brand partnership, right? Manny and Laura went into even deeper detail about what happened on their full coverage podcast. They explained that they were both at Coachella having fun. They weren't fully there and aware. And they were kind of put on the spot by this hourglass girl to do a video for her. We're, we're hanging out and then a girl comes up to us and she's like, oh my God, hi, you know, been following you guys. We're like, oh my God, hi, yes, yes, yes. Um, so good to see you. And she's like, I work for Hourglass actually. Can we film a TikTok? And me and Manny are always kind of like, what are you putting on this? Because it's this is the thing, guys. We've been through shit and I don't love filming content for other people because I don't know what they're going to do with it. I don't know what caption they're going to put on it. I don't know what kind of page it's going to go on because I don't know them. So it's like you're filming content of me. Like, what are you going to say and do with it? I'm always I, weary. I couldn't agree more. And I think that when you're at a festival, I almost find it slightly inappropriate to like ask people 
to do content for you that you don't know. Actually, got, she got me first. I just said hey to Manny first. She got me first. So then she comes up and she's like, hey, like I work at Hourglass, like da da da. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, I love that. Like, I'm actually wearing an Hourglass concealer right now. And she's like, oh, cool. Can we do a video and like record a TikTok? And I'm like, sure. And yeah. it was a very reluctant sure. Like, yeah. I didn't really want to. But I was like, sure. She's like, what are you going to do? So she, like, planned it out, obviously. She's like, creates content for them. She's like, We're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, like, what you're wearing. And you're going to say Hourglass Concealer. I'm like, okay, like, sure. Mind you, I wasn't in my fullest, rightest mind. It's mm -hmm. Saturday. Mm -hmm. I'm gone with the wind. Mm -hmm. Truly. Right. Um. So I was like, okay, sure. So we did the thing. Um. That video goes up. That same day, I had done my... Urban Decay Get Ready With Me, which, and I use the Urban Decay Quickie Concealer. Yeah. But I use that one as well. I had, I have like, had like three concealers on. I was using that one to brighten. So I forgot in the moment to be like, oh, I'm also wearing like NARS and I'm wearing Urban well, Decay. Well, I mean, that like. Post it and everyone's like, I thought you were wearing Urban Decay. And I'm like, I'm trying to also respect the brand partnership when I'm doing my Urban Decay deal, showing that I'm using Urban Decay because I am using Urban Decay and I actually am using it and I like it, but it doesn't mean I'm not using other things. I'm just not showing them because I'm respecting the brand's par partnership. I can actually see where they're coming from when it comes to this. I feel like the lines of what's acceptable and what's not at Coachella can really easily get blurred. There are so many people who are just there to have a good time and see their friends, but then there's this whole other side to it. There's a reason Coachella has been coined the Influencer Olympics. A lot of people are just there to network and make deals and be seen with this brand and that brand. Tana and Jeff recently talked about how Coachella is pretty much like influencers going to a work event. There's like so many different like bubbles and like webs of, of people doing different things at Coachella. And we fall into this strange web of people that are also like working. Like mm. we're working. They even found Laura and asked her to do a video for them as well. Oh my gosh, your makeup looks so good. What are you wearing? Ambient soft glow highlighter. <gasps> From Hourglass? From Hourglass. Oh my gosh, stunning. Looks so good. I think what Manny should have done was just been like, look, I would love to do something with Hourglass in the future, but right now I'm here with Urban Decay. I'm wearing Urban Decay mixed in here is probably not the best idea. I'm sure Manny knows that's what he should have done and he's probably wishing he had done that. But like he said, he felt put on the spot and he did say he was not in the right state of mind when she asked. The next drama from Coachella is actually something that's pretty shocking, but at the same time, not shocking at all. For a while now, Tana has made it more than clear that she does not like James Charles. She's dragged him every chance she's got on social media, like she was done with him. Tana Mojo explained why her and James Charles are no longer friends. Who is one person you wish you never became friends with? James Charles. You win some, you lose some, you know? Who do you still got beef with out there? I guess my number one people know this, obviously, is James Charles. I don't like James Charles, I say that sometimes. Why don't you like him? Let me get out my scroll. Well, a few weeks ago, Tana went on the Plan Brie podcast and she revealed that James actually came up to her, they talked things out, and actually had a good conversation. And he came up to me. Mm -hmm. And this was the first time we'd talked in like years. And like years, years. And um, it was actually a really nice conversation. We're, I, we're obviously never going to be like besties. You know? Yeah. Well, Tana took things a step further during Coachella weekend, and she actually met up and took a picture with James. They were both at Coachella wearing very similar outfits, and a lot of people on TikTok were like, oh, Tana is not gonna like this. Like, people literally thought Tana would be upset that she was at Coachella matching with someone she publicly doesn't like. But no. Tana ended up taking a picture with James, posting it to her Snapchat story, and wrote, We showed up matching to Coachella day one. Drunk me had no choice but to take this pic. And I don't know, but this just feels really strange to me. I feel like Tana always follows whatever the popular opinion is. She takes a side publicly, people praise her for being on the right side, and then when things die down a bit, she changes her mind. I just don't understand why you would want to be pictured with someone who you claim to not be a good person. 
Finally, to end things off, we have an update on James and his new brand, Painted. As you guys know, James was being called out last week after he revealed the winners for his Painted campaign. He said he wanted artists of all skill levels. He wanted moms, grandmas, people with normal jobs, and so many people ended up applying thinking they genuinely had a chance. In the end, James ended up picking 10 people who already had pretty big platforms. Those who entered and didn't have a following really felt like they wasted their time. Clearly, this was just another marketing strategy. He made everyday people think they had a chance, it got his brand name out there, and in the end, he just chose influencers anyway. Well, James flew all the influencers down to LA, he took them on a tour, he took them to BOA, and gave them the whole influencer experience. My 10 artists that won my campaign casting call are on their way to LA, so I woke up super early and headed over to their hotel rooms to sneak in with my team at Elegancy Event Services to deck out every single one of their rooms. We got custom balloons, custom painted pillows and merch, and of course I stocked them with the Create Paints. The next morning, Trevor woke up super early at literally the crack of dawn to take the 10 artists on a Hollywood sign hike. They got smoothies, and then I pulled up to the hotel in a Hollywood tour bus. It's very cheesy, but I figured I lived in LA for six years, I've never even done one, so if all these people are visiting for the first time, might as well make it, you know, a fun little moment. We got in and out for lunch and then finished the night with a dinner at Boa Steakhouse. If you guys have never had Boa, it is so bougie, so good. Oh my God, the food was so bomb. I gave a speech that thank you to everybody for coming. And of course we made lots of content and got lots of photos. And then at the very end of the night, you guys, when we left the restaurant, there were paparazzi waiting outside, which was so fun. They got photos of all the different artists. So they had their little superstar moment before the shoot tomorrow. James documented the shoot. He shared behind the scenes of the product being used. He shared campaign photos, and he even revealed that his mom will be a part of the campaign. There was also a surprise 11th artist chosen for the campaign that is joining me here in LA, and it is my mom. <laughs> I'm super excited. I love her so much and it's been a couple of months since I got to see her last and as much fun as this week is, it's also very stressful and overwhelming as well. So having my mommy here really helps out. And I'm going to say this again, but this has absolutely nothing to do with any of the influencers that James chose. They all look so good. It seems like they did a really great job, but I just think the campaign would have gone over so much better if he hadn't just stuck with his original plan and actually invited people of every skill level and had a mix of influencers, makeup artists, and just the everyday normal makeup consumer. I mean, clearly he went the influencer route because he knows all these influencers are going to be vlogging, his product is going to be pushed to millions of people through these influencers. From a business point of view, it does make sense. But don't lie and say you're looking for normal people only to turn around and do this. That's why so many people are upset. Anyways guys, let me know what you think about everything down below and I'll see you next time.